welcome back. This is lesson 8.4, our continuing geometry unit. And now we're going to talk about and show you how to do construction of angle bisectors. Now we've done line bisectors and we're going to do angle bisectors, but it's almost exactly the same thing if you think about an angle being a straight angle. So when we were bisecting a line, if you thought of it as a straight angle, we're just going to take and apply that same stuff here for the same process to angles which are acute and obtuse. And we'll also talk a little bit about the uh, reflex angles too. So what I want you to do is I want you to get a piece of paper and I want you to draw an angle on it. And I want you to see whatever you can do, whatever way, I want you to see if you can bisect it. Now remember, bisecting means to cut directly in half. So I want you to divide that angle you've drawn into two equal angles. And I want you to check it with your protractor. Well, how did you do this? Well, the easiest way is probably just to fold the paper. And then you measured it, and it worked really well, didn't it? OK, now if you, if you didn't fold the paper, maybe use your, your protractor to divide the two angles in half. Or you could have used a ruler and a compass, or you might have even used a Myra. There's a variety of different ways we can do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start talking about the different ways to do it. So the first one is how do you do it with folding a paper? Well, first off, if you take a look here, you have to drive, sorry, draw an angle, which is either obtuse like this one is, or acute, and then you fold it so that when you put this piece of paper on that one, this line exactly matches that. So when you look through it, you only see one single line. You'll probably have to draw a little bit darker angle, and you might even have to hold it up to the light to line everything up. And then when you put the crease in, this crease right here, that's your angle, angle bisector. So that means that this angle right here and this angle right here are going to be equal with your bisector going right up the middle as they've done right here. Okay, so there's your angle bisector and the two angles here and here are equal. All right. Now, the second way of doing it is to use the Myra. Now, a Myra is okay. Um, if you go back here for a second and take a look at what we did here, on this picture right here, what you would do is put the Myra almost exactly where that bisecting line goes. So there's your Myra going to sit like that. And as you look through it, you just um, arrange your Myra so that you can see the two uh, lines add up, or sorry, line up. When they do, take your pencil and draw on the inside of the Myra. Now make sure you're using the beveled edge, edge of the Myra on the bottom closest to you so that that line goes right down the middle of the glass. So that one there is, is here. So we've seen that one. That's so not too difficult. Now, you can do this, use a set square. Now, I've, I've shown you, I, I've, I've included it here for you to use. However, we're not going to be using the set squares. Most, uh, the reason for that is I don't have a class set. I do have a class set of uh, uh, protractors and rulers, and I'm getting working towards a class set of uh, compasses, but I do not have enough set squares. So we're not going to worry about it. Besides, this is the fourth or the fifth, one of the five methods you can use. So not knowing how to do it one way is not going to hurt you. But if you want to take a look at it, you can see uh, how it's done here. It's quite straightforward. Just set your, your two protractors or your set square on this, draw a vertical line, turn it around, draw a vertical line, and then take and draw a line through here, straight up, and you'll get your bisector. Okay, now, using circles. This is the one that most of you are going to be most comfortable with, and it's actually the one that's most accurate. And once you learn how to do it, it's actually, uh, it combines both accuracy and speed. And it becomes the best way to do it, really. So if you draw an angle, and you know the angle here is B is 126 degrees, it's not necessary that you know what the angle is, because you could measure it later. Um, this here is, is a circle, and this circle is drawn around point B. So take your protractor, put it, so your compass, sorry, and draw a circle that goes up about halfway or three quarters of the way up your two uh, arms of your angle here called rays. And once you put your point on the vertice B, draw your circle. Now once that's done, you just move your compass to here, and you'll see in the blue circles, that's the second one, and there's your second one. And that gives you your little intersection here and your intersection here. And this allows you to take the third choice, and that's to draw a line right down from B through H. And there you get your bisector. So by doing it this way, you have bisected angle from FB and BG. You'll divide it in half so that FBH and HBG are equal. If you want to turn this into a rhombus, all you got to do is take and join F to H and H to G which takes down right here, and you, you'll get yourself a rhombus, okay? Now, what I need you to do now is we need to practice it. So here's an acute angle, and this is what I'd like you to do first. I'd like you to take an acute angle and draw it on a piece of paper that you can separate and, and not have to worry about having it in your textbooks or, sorry, in your, in your workbook. And I want you to draw it using a ruler. 
And then once you're done doing your drawing it, I want you to use paper and I want you to fold it and see if you can bisect an angle. Now it doesn't matter what the angle is, just draw an acute angle less than 90 and then fold it and bisect it. And I'll give you a second to do that. All right. If you did it correctly, you should have through here up to the middle a fold a crease in your paper. This becomes your bisector. So if you would put a line down that, you'd end up getting a bisector. And this angle right here and this angle right here would now be equal. Okay? Let's go to the second version. Now I want you to take your Myra and I want you to draw an obtuse angle on a piece of paper and I want you to use your Myra to do it. And if you don't have a Myra, that's fine. Um, you'll just have to wait for the next one. So you stop the recording and you, uh, bisect this with the Myra. Okay, now I can't show you what I'm looking at, but if you take the Myra and you put it over here and you twist it and you get it exactly in the right spot, it's kind of hard for me to do because, you know, I, I can't look through it, but it'll be somewhere like this. And then you take your pencil and you draw on the inside of the Myra right up through the middle. And then when you pull your Myra away, you should have your bisector. And this angle, again, this angle here, I guess I should use this here, this angle there, and this angle there should be equal. All right, now, the next one. We're going to use arcs, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you how to do this so that we can, you can master it. This is what the final thing should look like. Now, you've noticed something here. I don't use full circles. It's because when I'm working with this, I know what I need to have, and I don't have to have all those... Um, uh, full circles. What I need is basically, I need to know where, where this section right here is. That's the only intersection I need. So if I were to take and put my compass point here, right, and then I take that compass point and I make my arc go this way, I'll have my first arc in place. That's arc one. I don't have to go around the circle the rest of the way. You can if you want, but it's not required. The only pieces of information I'm looking for are right here, and right there. Those are the two intersections I need because that's where I'm going to put my compass for the second one. So once that's done, take your compass and put the point here and draw your second arc and put your point here and draw your third arc. And again, these are the only two pieces you need to know about. This one right here and this one right there. Okay, uh, And that'll get us this piece, which is the most important out of all of them. Now once you've got this intersection right here, all you have to do is take your ruler Go straight up using your rear right there. Okay? So now that we've got, I've gone through it now with you twice, let's take a look at actually doing it. All right? So now you can watch me do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and get off of my magic pen, or it's actually going to not actually do anything. It'll just stay there. If so, it'll just disappear. So first thing, take your compass, put it on the vertex of your angle, and spread this out. And you want to be, a, you know, be a, a little bit of the ways out. Now remember, you only need to do this part because this is all we're working with. You don't have to go all the way around. If you like and you want to put this section in, go ahead. It won't hurt. Now, move your compass to here on the first and then take your compass and you want you, what you're going to be using is you only need to know about the inner inside point right here. This is all you're going to need and you can eyeball it. You know it's going to come out here somewhere. If you want to, Right. If you really want to, you can actually take and you could move and draw the second circle and put the rest of the circle in. It's not necessary, but you can put it in. And then, of course, move your compass over to here. And again, draw, but you're only going to need your arc right here because that's where your centerpiece is going to go. All right. Again, if you're interested, you can take and put the rest of the circle in if, you're, if you want to, but it's not going to be needed. Once you have this, take your compass out of the way. And you'll notice that I have this point right here. This is the most important part, uh, is my intersection. And I have my intersection over here too. And this is the two pieces I'm going to use when I use my ruler. So grab your ruler and move it up here. And you're going to take and make a line that goes from the vertice down, the vertex down here. And it goes through this intersection right there. Once that's done, grab your pencil and make a line through there. Now, a little bit later, you're going to be asked in one of the assignment questions to take and do what's called the, uh, the reflex angle. Now, remember, this here is the acute angle. I'll, I'll put this in, in, in a different color here so you can see it. Um, this here is the acute angle on the inside. All right. Now, whenever you draw an angle, you also draw at the same time, 
this angle out here, the reflex angle. Okay? So if you want to know what the reflex angle is you want to draw, all you have to do is take the full circle and erase or subtract the angle in here. So if you know that I need to, for example, a, uh, say this is supposed to be 30 degree angle, then I take 360 and I take away the 30 and what will I have left here is 330 degrees. So you can work backwards to try to figure it out. And that's going to happen in one of our questions coming up in our assignments. You're going to be asked to draw a reflex angle, which is uh, exactly 270 degrees. And then to do that, all you have to do is draw, and I'm just going to change this here slightly, uh, unlock this. You're going to have to draw an angle, which is 90 degrees. And this is the 90 in here. Now, if this is 90, then you know that from here, outside and all the way around, that's going to be your 270. All right? And that's what the question is going to ask you for. It's going to say, draw a reflex angle of 270. Well, 270 and 90 make 360. So if you know that, you take 200, 360, you take away 270, and you're going to find out that that equals 90 degrees. So then all you have to do is draw a 90 degree angle in here, and the outside what's left is going to be 270. Now, that's only one of the questions, but if you're having trouble, take a look at it, and uh, you can pretty well figure it out. It's not that difficult. Okay, so you're drawing your, your angle here. Remember, I had to put this one back to where it was, right there. And you can see that, oh, I may be in that. Oh, something's all messed up here. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's going to be out here somewhere. So there's our bisected angle. This angle right in here and this angle right in here are equal, each one being half of your original angle. Okay, let's move on to the next one. And that is, I'm going to draw uh, an acute angle for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, acute. I say acute. I meant obtuse. Okay, so here's an obtuse angle. And we're going to bisect this obtuse angle. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to correct, lock everything down. All right. Now, again, same thing. If I want to do this angle and I want to cut it in half, bisect it, the first thing I'm going to need is my compass. You put your compass on this point right here, and you want to be out far enough that you can actually do the arc. Now I'm only going to do the arc halfway this time. Okay? Move your compass to this point. All right? And draw this out here. Move your compass to this point and draw this out here. And you'll notice now there's my crossover, my intersection. So taking your ruler, go from this point right here out through the middle of where these two actually intersect. So you need this point. You need this point. You need to find out where they intersect right here, and then you draw a line from this point right here straight out using your ruler, and that will give you an angle right here and right here, which are equal. Okay? So let's get you started on the assignment. Page 312, I want you to change this one. I want you to do 1, 9. All right, so if you have any trouble, go back over everything. Remember that some of the angles that, uh, sorry, the, the handouts that you were asked for are in your notes, so you can just uh, use those when it says your teacher will hand out a, or give you a copy of, of this particular angle for you to work with. Okay, so that's bisecting angles. Uh, if you have trouble, watch it again. If not, come in and ask me, and I will give you all the help that I can. All right, see you next lesson.